and I am going to keep the introduction brief as her story speaks for itself. He was in tremendous pain. Barber was prosecuted and charged. With he should have had a choice. Choices. I was never an activist before. They give us a sense of freedom. His quality of life was greatly, greatly diminished. At 93 and ill for years, Joseph Yorshaw didn't have many choices. So he asked me for it, I handed him the bottle. So he chose his legally prescribed liquid morphine. And he opened it and he drank what was left in the bottle. His daughter, Barbara Mancini, Careers. didn't think anything of it. Hours later, a nurse stopped by and to see her father. Here. And they said if I didn't call 911, they would. And they did. They called 911. Police and paramedics arrived. And they took my father to the hospital over my strenuous objections. Your Shaw found himself in the hospital. Yes. Where he was treated and then monitored for an overdose. Against his wishes. Your Shaw died four days later. I'm arrested, I'm arraigned, and I'm charged. It was an act that closed one part of her life and opened another. Colorado is considering a bill that would legalize what some call death with dignity. Others call it physician-assisted suicide. It's not okay to say that my family members and my friends who have passed away from cancer and various illnesses who did not choose suicide had an undignified death. Carrie Ann Lucas represents Not Dead Yet, a disability group that opposes the bill. We're only allowing some people to choose to end their own life, and those are people who have or are classified with at least one type of disability, and that's discriminatory. Physicians have to heal and not to harm. Jennifer Ballantyne is an end-of-life expert. Today, She's also against the bill. Physicians have a lot of power, and patients at the end of life, having received a terminal diagnosis, are very vulnerable. I had a big issue with his hospice care because they didn't appropriately treat his pain. Ballantyne agrees that hospices have room for improvement. It's a reason to ramp up public policy to continue to improve hospice and palliative care. I don't know if I even ever will have what you call appropriate grieving. Mancini's charges were dropped one year after her dad died. It was hard to believe it was even happening. Her father he didn't have a happen. choice. And he took what was left. Now she wants to make sure others do. It was wrong, and I hope no other family ever has to experience such a thing.